everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos that I've done in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you watch at least the unboxing video just to get an overview of the puzzle in its entirety. Now today we are doing bag, I've lost track. Oh my goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, bag 12. Yeah, okay, bag 12, which is section 22. I confuse myself because the bag numbers in the sections don't match up because I'm not doing it in, in section number as they suggest. So this is bag 12, um, section 22. It's another one that I like to call the along the floor. These ones I find are quite a bit easier to do. I really do enjoy the molding. We have two children now sitting down reading a comic book. There's two paintings in this section. I'm glad that they're small because I think they might be a bit tricky. Now, if I pull out my panoramic poster of the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle, what you're gonna see is that I've completed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections already at the start of the puzzle and this is this lower floor section down here the reason why it's bag number 12 is i've done two actually three i've totally lost track this is bag 13 not 12 because i've done three bookshelf sections remember in the last section i was missing a piece from the bookshelf so when i complete this jigsaw puzzle i'm going to try to find the piece that i'm missing hopefully it'll fit nicely in the library section because they're all cut from the same pattern. Then I'm gonna give that piece to my hubby and hopefully he can make a model and replicate the piece. And I'm not sure whether or not we're gonna like print off a copy of the, the picture from the poster and tape it on, glue it on, or if he's gonna freehand paint it. I'll let you know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, so we're actually at nine, 10, 11, 12. This is bag, lucky bag number 13, section 22. I can't keep them straight, apologies. But yeah, I think it shouldn't be too bad. I'm more almost excited about finding my missing piece and creating the one that's missing from the bookshelf so I can feel like that's completed. Um, then I am, I, I will enjoy this, this puzzle. I always do. And with all the voiceovers, I'll describe the two paintings. Now this is another Monet, but this is a new artist that we haven't seen yet before in the jigsaw puzzle. So it'll be interesting to see. And it, it looks like, I don't know, children dress, I can, someone getting painted, like their portrait painted. It'll be interesting to see the story behind that painting. So there you go. For the love of puzzles, we are on to bag number 13, which is section 22, as we travel around art. There are two paintings in this section of the puzzle. The first is from Diego Velázquez, a Spanish painter, and is entitled Las Meninas from 1656. He was the leading artist in the court of King Philip IV of Spain and Portugal and of the Spanish Golden Age. In addition to numerous renditions of scenes of historical and cultural significance, he painted scores of portraits of the Spanish royal family and of commoners, culminating in his masterpiece, this painting, Las Meninas, which in English translates to The Ladies in Waiting. It's currently held at La Museo del Prado in Madrid, Spain. It's approximately 318 by 276 centimeters in size, so that's quite large. Now the version in this puzzle cuts off a bit from the upper wall ceiling section, which appears quite dark in the original work. Las Meninas has been regarded as one of the most widely analyzed works in Western painting due to the way its complex and enigmatic composition raises questions about reality and illusion and the uncertain relationship it creates between the viewer and the figures depicted. The painting is believed by F.J. Sanchez Canton to depict the main chamber in the Royal Alcazar of Madrid during the reign of King Philip IV of Spain and presents several figures most identifiable from the Spanish court, 
captured, according to some commentators, in a particular moment as if in a snapshot. Some of the figures look out of the canvas towards the viewer, while others interact among themselves. The five-year-old Infanta Margaret Teresa, the daughter of King Philip IV of Spain, is surrounded by her entourage of maids of honor, chaperones, bodyguard, two little people, and a dog. Now, just behind them, Velázquez portrays himself working at a large canvas. Velázquez looks outwards, beyond the pictorial space, to where a viewer of the painting would stand. In the background, there is a mirror that reflects the upper bodies of the king and queen. They appear to be placed outside the picture space in a position similar to that of the viewer, although some scholars have speculated that their image is a reflection from the painting that Velázquez is shown to be working on. The next painting in this section of the puzzle is another one from Claude Monet and it's entitled Impression Sunrise. It's from 1872 and is currently held at La Musée Marmottan Monet in Paris, France. It's approximately 48 by 63 centimeters in size, which is a nice but smaller size. The painting was created from a scene in the Pult of Le Havre. Monet depicts a mist which provides a hazy background to the piece set in the French harbor. The orange and yellow hues contrast brilliantly with the dark vessels where little if any detail is immediately visible to the audience. It is a striking and candid work that shows the smaller boats in the foreground almost being propelled along by the movement of the water. This has, once again, been achieved by separate brush strokes that also show various colors sparkling on the sea. Now, Monet visited his hometown of Le Havre in the northwest of France in 1872, and he proceeded to create a series of works depicting the port there. The six painted canvases depict the port during dusk, day, dawn, dark, and from varying, various viewpoints as well some from the water them itself and others from a hotel room down over which he could see the port. Impression Sunrise became the most famous in this series after it was debuted in April 1874 in Paris at what would become known as the Exhibition of the Impressionist. This painting is also credited with inspiring the name of the Impressionist movement. I'm sorry, I have so much trouble saying that word. Impressionist movement. <laughs>
I believe I found the missing piece that I need for the other section of the bookshelf. I'm working on this section of the puzzle at the moment. I think this is the piece. Let's go try it out in the bookshelf section. Here's the bookshelf section. Sorry, I have it in another room, so the lighting might not be the best, but let's just try this in. There you go. It fits perfect. So we'll use that piece as a model and we'll try to create the missing piece that we don't have. And another section of the jigsaw puzzle is done. Actually, I should say that two sections are now done. What do you think of that missing piece? I am so impressed with what my hubby did. Seriously, if you get like right up close, you can tell. But like from even, you know, 20 centimeters away, it looks fine, it looks perfect. I'm so pleased. Ah, oh, I'm so, I was just ecstatic because now I feel like, okay, we're back on track and we do have a solution in case more pieces come up missing. But yeah, leave your comments below. How do you think he did? I, I think he did great. It's awesome. I'm so glad that he's so artsy and handy. So this section of the puzzle, I would classify definitely as another easy section. All the ones along the floor. I find are quite easy and I can get through them quite quickly and I've really kind of mastered the sorting and how I proceed to build each section especially this molding down at the bottom I found it quite funny because it's a bit stereotypical if you brought little kids to a fine art museum you know would they be interested in the art or would they be reading their comic book many would probably be reading a comic book um, you can't really make out the writing on the book, but that's fine. Uh, it's still cute. It was lots of fun to do. I'm very glad though and pleased that these two paintings were smaller because I think larger sizes, they'd actually be quite difficult. There's quite a bit of dark area on this one at the top and well, the blue. I mean, it's blue and various shades of blue and more blue. So I did quite well on those, but it's because they were quite small. It took me only 10 hours and four minutes to complete this section, and it's actually the fastest section so far. And to, I'm not trying to rush through them. I think with each section, I'm just getting better, maybe, or quicker at doing them, particularly when it's something that's repeated, like I said, the molding. I did notice that this frame, I felt I had a lot of false fits. The frame pattern repeats itself, and some of the pieces are so close and cut, but I've gotten smarter in the sense that as soon as I take a piece and I go, oh, it should fit there, but it doesn't, I go, wait a minute, is the piece next to it potentially a false fit? So I'm more, can't find the right word, I'm more aware that, oh, check for false fits before thinking, you know, the piece goes somewhere else. So I found a few false fits with um, this particular frame. Very nice, very lovely. Let's see what else I have to say. That was about it, not too much to say. I'm just, I'm so happy right now. And I love seeing all the sections on the floor together. Now remember, I'm just kind of overlapping them. I'm not interlocking the prongs, so you can see that in the photos. I just wanna not stress the prongs as much. And that's why I still think it looks lovely. I love seeing those photos. So yeah, that's about it. The next section though, oh, I think she's gonna be a bit tricky. It's another one that it's one full painting and it looks very painterly, <laughs> very brush strokes and whatnot. I think it's gonna be a bit more challenging and take me time. So it was kind of nice that I had two easier sections with the library and then with this one along the floor. So I'm ready, I'm ready to do another challenging section. But that's about it for now. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao.